We are again in the third video today on um, with with you, with you, Chris Christopher Power. And you, you, as I said, as you just said, you did live um, on one of these, which is just down yeah, here. Let's take right. a walk to the house now. Um, one talked. of the things I like to talk to people about on the night of the blast is how it felt and what happened a few days after. It's very. It's very easy for people to watch in the media um, and see something in the press, but when you come here for the first time, you can see for yourself that it has a greater impact, I believe, certainly psychologically. I mean, throughout my life, I've, I've looked in newspapers and I've seen things uh, in documentaries or in the news, and often when I go to the very place, it touches me even more. So this was my house so it's boarded up at the moment so on the night of the blast the window came in and the glass went right across the floor of the living room to the kitchen and I got terrified thinking it was a bomb I came outside that front door after going outside the back and I was terrified my legs were like jelly and I slumped onto the floor uh, on a nearby or by a nearby lamppost. There were lots of people running about. It was great to see people knocking at each other's door. The sad thing was that 10 days later when we were allowed back in, most of our furniture was written off and disposed of, including our clothing and toiletries. That we were able to salvage some of our other stuff. Very emotional really because it was like time stopped and when we went back in everything was as it was, as though it frozen in time. So it's very emotional really. It's actually Mother's Day the next day after the blast and I remember going in seeing my Mother's Day present on the table as it was on the night. So yes, it's very, very emotional. Um, Interestingly, at four o'clock in the morning in Pakistan, their time, a lady texted my wife, who finally, I must say, got to me, because on that night, my family were terrified that I'd been involved uh, seriously in the blast. And so they were looking for me and trying to ring me and couldn't get through. So when they finally got to me, we hugged, we made up. My wife, on her phone, gets a text. And it's from her friend in Pakistan. She'd been watching the news. So it proves the point. It was global on the night. It went even to America. And it was broadcast in America on the day, uh, sorry, the evening, the blast. So we had nowhere to go. And we finally did decide to go to my mum's who looked after us. And the second day we went to my sister-in-law's. On the third day, we had another text from, um, from our local church who said that the lady in Pakistan and her sister have an empty house. So we were able to stay there for about two to three weeks, which was great. And it was only after then that the insurance company came to us and said, we have to find temporary accommodation. So we found a bungalow, uh, which is in Spittal. However, there are people still after 19, 20 weeks displaced. People living with relatives, people can't get back in. It's just horrendous. Hotels, I mean, there have been, you know, as you said on the radio interview, bed and breakfast and hotels used yes, as well. Yes, bed and breakfast, people were being put up. Uh, people in the church were looking after people. People were donating food and toiletries just to make sure that they, they, they were well looked after. And how long do you think some people might have to wait? I mean, I know some some places you can't go back in. I mean, it's just it's, oh, it's the end of it. It'll yeah. have to be demolished. But in some cases, could it be could it be that you could go back into some places? You know, uh, after so so long. It's really up to um, the structural, uh, the, the building structure. Really, if it's sound um, and it's not grade two listed, then hopefully those people may be allowed back in. I I can't answer that. But what I can say. Um, we're not going to see much major work on these buildings until at least October on the outside because, again, it's all about planning permission. So I'm afraid it could be a long, long time before anyone 
in this L-shaped block goes back into their home, which is sad. Which is why, as a community, we need people to step in, like the government. Our house was built in 1897. That's a long time. And so you can imagine the devastation for the trust when this happened. Because this is their livelihood. This is what they believe in. This is something they have to preserve. It, it, it is a tourist village. It's a beautiful village, Michael. Um, yeah, I, I'm sad. I'm emotionally sad that this has happened. Because when I stand in that house uh, with, with, you know, the contractors and I look around, it's, it's horrific for me. And when I look at the window, sometimes I, 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 I get all emotional because my life could have been seriously over with. And yeah, as you said on the, the radio interview that, that you can listen to as well, is that, uh, is that you just seem to be lucky in terms of you that you, you'd normally go over to the window and for some reason you, yeah. you seem to know not to, you just didn't do it. And Absol absolutely. Generally on most nights I will go to the window to look out if I hear a noise outside. Sometimes I'll stroke the cat or even get up to go upstairs. Yeah. Now if that would have happened on the night, I seriously would have either been dead or in hospital. We had blinds on the window and we had curtains which protected us from that last so, all I can say is thank God that I'm alive today. Um, we could have lost many, many lives. And you know what? Not one life was lost, was it? Which was, you know, which was quite miraculous given the scale of this. This, this blast was just seen, uh, it was not just seen, it was heard across the world peninsula, you know. It was even heard in North Wales, you see this devastation. There were serious injuries, but nobody died. I mean, there were serious injuries in the Chinese restaurants. Mm, absolutely. Um, um, and, and we're fortunate in a way. But one of the things I tend to say to people is no one has to die. But this actually to, is to, why, to this is exactly yeah. why they won't give funding, actually. They're, they're using that as the arbitrary marker that because nobody actually died, um, it's le it's, it, they're seeing it as less serious on that basis, even though um, it, it, serious injuries, uh, extreme displacement. So that um, that is actually uh, what has caused this this debate that, you, that you, as you say, we hmm. we shouldn't be having a debate. It should have just been something we should have got. Yeah. To so, me, a disaster is when <laughs> when, when when something yeah. affects people's lives and also buildings or. Uh, you know what we see around us and that's what happened on the 25th of March 2017 yeah. I don't know why the government don't see that because it's affected hundreds of people not just not just the victims it's it's branched out to families and I think that's sad I agree with you they can't play with people's lives yes people didn't die but let's not use that as a criteria for helping new ferry victims it's wrong what you've just seen today and witnessed as we walked around is not the day after or a week after. It is 19, 20 weeks after and still the government have not stepped in. And I'm sorry that I talk about that. It's only because we, we've been fighting for all these weeks with the help of our local MP, Alison McGovern and Warren Ward, who've done a great job, a great job of of getting things out there to the press and the media and also for Alison who stood up in Parliament and said that we need help. So I'm proud to say tonight thank you uh, to, to, to our local councillor and MP and to all the people that have helped. You've seen for yourself Michael the devastation of this blast. It's horrific and this was a disaster. It wasn't something small. It is huge and it is global. So for someone to say it was not a national incident, I think that is just wrong.